Why should we give land to the Indians when it clearly says on the paper it belongs to the farmers? But surely you must realize that this is their home. These indigenous tribes have been living on this land for hundreds of years. Listen, this war is not fair. Some people win, some people lose. The whole world thinks they can tell Brazil what to do with her land. Sorry, no. We do what we please. Our land is being moved without a stop. The strength of the Indian power has been spread throughout the world. For a thousand years, the world's cultures have been called the Jigu. The Incredibly beautiful planet. A home that we will hopefully pass on to generations to come. But as the years go by, it's becoming increasingly hard to imagine what kind of a world we're leaving behind us. We've spent the last four years traveling around the world, filming the stark reality that people now face from the threat of ecological collapse. It's now become very clear to us that there's one thing driving the destruction of our ecosystems faster than anything else. Let us show you how this very same thing might just also be our salvation. environmental scientists warn that we are fast approaching the point of no return if we don't make a substantial course reversal. We see really serious catastrophic effects in the next few years, certainly in the next decade or two. The world will be com completely different from the way it is now. In the 1900s, the world has increased in the world. In the 1950s, 지난 50년간 관측된 기상 재난은 100년 전보다 무려 4배 이상 높습니다. We began to work together to move this issue onto the global center stage. There was a lot of discussion about the contribution from buildings and from industrial factories, but I became aware during that same period of time that there was another factor that was going undiscussed. And that is the role of animal agriculture, which I could see was playing some significant role around the planet. But this was the elephant in the room no one wanted to talk about. Whatever environmental issue you want to look at, from you know, species loss to water pollution to water use to climate change, animal agriculture is one of the top causes. The critical widespread negative impact of animal agriculture on our planet is undeniable. Severe global crises from climate change and environmental damage to species extinction, hunger, poverty, disease, and antibiotic resistance, all of these have direct connections to animal agriculture and the massive inefficiency of our current food production systems. 2009년 위키릭스는 네슬레 경영진과 미국 관리들이 나눈 대화 
더 투어지 호라이즌을 폭로했습니다. 네슬레 경영진은 그들의 연구에 따르면 30년 안에 전 세계의 마실 물이 부족해질 것이라고 말했습니다. 보고서는 인류가 이 재앙의 길로 들어서는 가장 큰 이유 중 하나가 바로 전 세계적인 육류 소비라고 밝혔습니다. If you look at the the impact that food choice has on on global warming, it's very significant. Eating meat is huge for global climate, and that's something where personal choice is the determining factor. So there's the only case I can think of where individual human choice would have a big effect would be uh, food. We're now over the line. And the idea that we're going to double meat production between now and 2050, this is just unsustainable. This is going to have to give. Our diet is taking us to an abyss. A significant reason why livestock production has been having such a huge impact on greenhouse gas emissions is because of the large surfaces of forests that have been destroyed in order to make room for pastures and for the uh, growth of soybean and maize uh, for feedstock production. 우리의 숲은 한때 놀라운 생명체들로 가득 찼었습니다. 최근 우리는 육류와 유제품에 대한 만족할 줄 모르는 식탐을 길러왔고 육류에 대한 수요가 증가함에 따라 점점 더 많은 땅이 필요했습니다. 우리는 원시림을 파괴했고 우리가 먹고 싶어하는 동물을 얻는 데 방해가 되는 모든 것을 제거했습니다. 동물들은 야생에서처럼 자유로이 활보할 수 없었기에 그들의 방목지는 금방 바닥났고 그들에게 먹이를 주기 위해 우리는 또다시 더 많은 숲을 베고 불태우고 유전자 변형 옥수수와 콩을 심고 살충제와 제초제, 합성 화학 비료를 들이부었습니다. 축산업은 우리 지구의 모습을 완전히 바꿔놓았습니다. 녹지는 인간의 농작물을 위한 것입니다. 전 세계에 걸쳐 있는 거대한 지역이죠. 하지만 붉은색으로 표시된 축산업에 사용하는 땅은 현재 지구 면적의 방대한 부분을 차지하고 있으며 인간의 농작물에 사용되는 땅보다 훨씬 더 넓은 지역입니다. Almost all the Earth's surface is now bears the mark of some kind of human impact, and most of that is livestock production. Agriculture has transformed the planet like nothing else. To produce milk, we farm an area about the size of Brazil. To produce beef, we farm an area about the size of Canada, the United States, the whole of Central America, Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador combined. To produce eggs, we farm an area the size of Sweden. To produce aquaculture feed, an area about the size of the UK. A plant-based diet would reduce the amount of land required to produce our food by 3.1 billion hectares. That's an area the size of the entire African continent. Amazon is the largest of the world's largest in the world. In the past few years, many animals live in this place is slowly changing. Most of the corn is sold in Brazil, but the corn is sold by people. In fact, the corn is sold by the world's largest of the world's largest of the world. 겨우 6% 미만입니다. 대부분의 콩은 가축 사료로 재배됩니다. 콩은 전 세계로 수출되어 우리가 매일 먹는 수천만 마리의 닭, 생선, 소, 돼지 등에게 먹이로 주어집니다. 숲은 수백만 야생 동물과 식물들의 서식지일 뿐만 아니라 지구의 대기를 조절하는 큰 역할을 합니다. 매일 이산화탄소를 들이마시고 우리를 위해 막대한 양의 신선한 산소를 내뿜습니다. 매년 1,800만 에이커 크기의 숲이 사라지는데 이는 대략 파나마의 국토 면적과 맞먹는 크기입니다. 현재 지구의 열대림 중 절반 가량이 파괴된 것으로 보이며 일부 과학자들은 전 세계적으로 중요한 조치가 취해지지 않는 한 2030년까지 
전세계 숲의 겨우 10% 정도만 남아있을 것이라고 예측했습니다. 매년 수백 명에 달하는 아마존 원주민들의 마을이 불타고 있습니다. 그들은 자신의 땅에서 강제로 쫓겨나고 많은 원주민들이 불법 무장단체에 살해당하면서 그들의 터전인 정글은 가축사료, 즉 콩재배를 위한 농지로 뒤바뀌었습니다. 가장 큰 피해를 입은 부족은 마토그로소 도술의 과라니 카이오와 부족입니다. Para nós indígena, antigamente as floresta que é a nossa casa. Quem começou a destruir a nossa aldeia é através da agropecuária. So there was actually a report that came out in 2018, and they found that the world's top five livestock corporations now release more annual greenhouse gas emissions than ExxonMobil, Shell, and BP. It is crazy when you think about it, because the EU is spending 24 billion pounds of taxpayers' money on livestock farming each year. And this is at a time when we are facing an ecological collapse and we drastically need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So it's no surprise that people are asking a lot of questions now about the fact that there seem to be some serious conflicts of interest going on here. There's some very heavy lobbying going on of government, and I think that happens throughout the world. And it's just a historic thing that needs to be, I think, rebalanced. As I've mentioned to you over the phone, um, I've worked with a number of large livestock companies around the world. Um, so the way it works is that a representative from or, uh, pays us usually up to half a million euros. We then target the relevant uh, politicians from different governments around the world and motions are made to pass legislation in favour of the company's business strategies. For environmental policy, we can be very persuasive in order to abolish or, or, or heavily relax environmental regulations in government so our clients have more freedom in their work. Uh, I mean, the other day we managed to kill proposed legislation that would have had a, a huge impact on the industry based on a report from the UNFAO. You know, the industry is, is just concerned with growth, but the environmental data that's coming out now, it's, it's really making that difficult for them. Today, 
democracy does not always function as well as it should because of the huge influence that uh, agribusiness corporations and livestock producers in particular exercise on decision making. A former director of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, Dr. Samuel Jatsi, warned as far back as 2010 that interventions by agribusiness lobbyists were blocking reforms that would offer better standards for human health and preserving the environment. Big animal agribusiness corporations and food producers' influence over political decisions about the regulation of their industry has long been a concern for campaigners who see the narrow interests of the industry taking widespread control. If we have any doubt about how powerful this influence is, we can recall that, for example, when the Advisory Committee on Dietary Guidelines in the US made recommendations to the US government as to how dietary guidelines should be shaped, they were blocked by this very powerful lobby of agribusiness interests. 2013년 UN 식량 농업 기구는 가축을 통한 기후 변화 대응이란 획기적인 보고서를 발표했습니다. 그 보고서는 축산업이 전 세계 교통 수단을 모두 합친 것보다 더 많은 온실가스를 배출한다고 언급했습니다. 점점 더 많은 과학자들이 축산업의 영향이 식량 농업 기구의 보고서보다 훨씬 심각하다고 여기고 있습니다. There are close ties between the research organizations and governments and government policy and industry. It's very pervasive because livestock industries depend on government policies that support them. The FAO report um, was prepared within the FAO by specialists of agriculture and livestock production, not by specialists of the environmental issues associated with uh, agricultural production. I believe that a more serious concern, of course, is that the International Meat Association was involved in preparing the report, which does raise the question of the independence with which the study was prepared. Government policy in that regard is not for the benefit of the land, it's for the benefit of the industry. 식량농업기구 보고서에 따르면 그들이 손잡은 단체들은 회원국가 및 비정부 단체, 그 밖에 유럽의 사료제조협회, 국제낙농협회, 국제육류사무국, 국제계란위원회, 국제가금류위원회 등과 같습니다. 매출 수백조 원이 넘는 이 산업 분야에서 축산업을 반대하는 과학보고서로 인해 잃을 것이 가장 많은 단체가 있다면 바로 이들이 아닐까요? Silvia Olbaxaboda, Padadal Totaran and Saraman Pelopsimida Olbaxanen, Migo Kunip Hang de Gigu, Chot Yosong Susakwak Jaimio, Jure Bukijan and Che, Hulu Hedger, Nuguboda, Oretongan, Tamaman Kirugul, Sewasimida When I was a child, the idea of a dead zone in the ocean was, was not even in our vocabulary. But in the 20th century, as agriculture began to greatly expand, the areas around the coast began to show signs of wear and tear. The first most notorious spotlight area, I think, was off the Gulf of Mexico. And it has simply grown over the years, an annual phenomenon that is coincident with the application of massive amounts of fertilizer. 우리가 먹을 동물들을 키우기 위한 수백만 제곱 마일의 땅은 질소 비료로 뒤덮여 있습니다. 질소는 밭을 지나 강으로 흘러 들어가고 결국 바다로 유입됩니다. 물에 질소가 많아지면. 해조류의 과잉 성장을 초래하고 결국 해조류는 우주에서도 보일 만큼 많아집니다. 해조류는 물속 산소를 고갈시켜 주위의 해양 생물을 죽음으로 이끕니다. 육류 소비 증가와 함께 이러한 저산소 위험 지역이 점차 늘고 있습니다. hundreds of dead zones that have developed all around the coastlines of the world. And 
okay, people say, that's, that's too bad for the fish. So sorry, fish. But we need to understand that what we do to the ocean, we're doing to ourselves. I want others to see and, and to see for themselves. This is all we've got, this little blue miracle. Yungnyuizhuishikdan보다 바다 속 대형 물고기의 약 90% 가량이 고갈되었습니다. 네이처 저널에 포함된 어류 자원에 관한 심도 있는 연구에 따르면 현재의 어획률이 지속되면 전 세계 어업은 30년 안에 완전히 붕괴될 것이라고 합니다. 생물의 다양성을 평가하는 정부 기관 IPBES에 따르면 해양 생물 멸종의 가장 큰 원인은 낚시입니다. 생선에 대한 우리의 식탐이 해양 생명을 고갈시키는 거죠. 노르웨이는 풍경이 아름다운 나라입니다. 또한 어두운 비밀이 숨겨져 있는 곳이기도 합니다. 노르웨이는 전 세계에서 양식 물고기를 가장 많이 수출합니다. 천문학적인 가치를 지닌 사업이죠. 야생 물고기의 수가 멸종에 가까이 감소할수록 어부들은 양식업으로 고개를 돌렸습니다. 노르웨이는 양식 연어와 대구를 가장 많이 생산하는 나라입니다. 우리가 먹는 생선의 70%는 양식장에서 옵니다. 수천 마리의 물고기가 작은 양식장 안에 갇혀 밀집 사육되고 질병이나 이가 쉽게 퍼져 업계에 아주 큰 문제가 되었습니다. 결국 생선이 시장에 도착할 때까지 죽지 않도록 막대한 양의 살충제, 살균제, 항생제들을 투여합니다. 생산에 붙은 이를 제거하기 위해 
거대한 흡입기로 생선을 빨아들이는 특수한 배가 사용됩니다. 생선은 펌프를 통해 빠르게 이동되며 이동 중에 이가 제거될 수 있게 고온의 열이 가해지거나 화학 용액으로 세척된 후 다시 수조 안으로 보내집니다. 생선들은 과산화수소와 아자메티포스 같은 기생충과 병균을 없애줄 화학물질로 뒤덮이고 그들의 먹이에는 테플로벤주론, 에마멕틴, 다이플로벤주론과 같은 유독성 화학물질이 포함됩니다. 연구자들은 이러한 화학물질이 생선에 누적되며 결국 우리의 식탁에도 오른다는 사실을 발견했습니다. 전 세계의 모든 양식 어류들도 마찬가지입니다. 환경운동가 타린 비숍은 노르웨이 서부의 항구도시 베르겐에 기반을 둔 환경단체 그린 워리어스를 만났습니다. 그린 워리어스는 지역 양식장에서 행해지는 참혹한 관행을 수년간 조사했으며 달인을 양식장 수면에 가려진 어두운 이면으로 데려갔습니다. 특수 제작된 잠수정 덕에 그들은 양식장 아래의 해저를 볼수 있었습니다. 해저에는 생선 폐기물과 박테리아, 먹지 않은 사료로 이루어진 두꺼운 오물이 있었습니다. 오물은 사료에 더해진 살충제로 가득했고, 새로운 연구는 전 세계 양식장에서 해양 생태계에 더해지는 막대한 양의 살충제가 생물 다양성에 참혹한 결과를 불러일으킨다는 것을 보여주었습니다. 또한 오물은 온실가스인 메탄을 엄청나게 내뿜습니다. 옥스퍼드 대학의 연구원들은 몇몇 양식 업종들이 현재 소고기 생산보다 더 많은 메탄을 방출하고 있다는 것을 발견했습니다. 리브 홈피오르드는 노르웨이 수산국 국장입니다. 노르웨이 있는 동안 우리는 그녀가 노르웨이 수산업을 규제하는 책임을 맡고 있을 뿐만 아니라 노르웨이에서 가장 큰 양식장 회사에 주식을 보유하고 있다는 정보를 얻었습니다. 많은 환경단체들은 이것을 이해관계의 큰 충돌이라고 생각합니다. 홈피오르드는 노르웨이 양식업에 관한 인터뷰에 응하며 탈인을 만나기로 했습니다. Well, fish farming is quite a new industry in Norway. It started back in the 1960s with some local entrepreneurs starting with hobby, and it's grown until it's a billion euro industry today. And um, seafood is the second largest export industry in Norway, and fish farming accounts for two thirds of the export value of seafood. So recently. We found out that you also have shares in one of the largest fish farm companies in Norway. Do you not feel that that's a conflict of interest? Uh, of course, there could be a con uh, in conflict of interest, uh, but this is a fact that's been known since before I got this position, and I've been open about it. I do not. I'm not involved in the business. from day to day or at any so it's and if there's um, uh, we have and um, I have sorry I have to do you have to start over again so all the decisions uh, so all the decisions that I made will either be for the whole industry not especially for this fish farm or it's only an advice to the politicians, and the politicians are setting the limits and the actual regulations. So if there's an actual case uh, handling regarding this company, then I will step aside. 
and uh, fixing the nets, etc. after storms. And on occasion, we'd seen some of the boats coming in to clean the uh, lice off them. It's quite a lot of dead fish, you know, diseased or they've died. But it's a lot of pink mush, you know, not, 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 uh, not healthy look. Having seen what I've seen and worked on the various sites around about where I've been in Scotland, I, I wouldn't eat farmed salmon. No, with a f <laughs> pretty, pretty rank. Salmon is marketed as healthy. It's also marketed in, in, in a very devious way, deceptive way, that they think it's a wild product. So it's a fake product, it's a fatty product, it's contaminated, it's marketed as healthy, but, it, but it's not. So salmon, if you see salmon, alarm bells should start ringing. It's pretty grim when you dive down to the bottom of the cages because, you know, we always see the bottom full of dead fish. And it's basically because many of these fish are so diseased, so parasite-ridden and laden with chemicals that they become sick and they live out their sad, short lives basically looking like zombies. You know, you don't see this when you go to the restaurant or the supermarket, but this is basically what a lot of the fish actually look like before it ends up on our plates. So tonight, Don wanted to show us how much of the farmed fish actually dies. Because of the very unnatural and unsanitary ways that they are kept, and they have rows of very large metal containers that they are constantly filling up with the dead fish. And I have to say that the smell as we get closer is actually pretty disgusting. So this is the sordid side of salmon farming in Scotland. This is the, the dirty secrets the industry don't want you to see. This is disease-ridden farm salmon. It's 15 to 20% fat. That's where the contaminants, the cancer-causing contaminants, PCBs, dioxins, and the artificial colorings are. So this is something to be avoided at all costs. This is the salmon farm just here. We got freedom of information, data from the Scottish Environment Protection Agency showing the use of over 50 tonnes of formaldehyde not just at this site but other sites across Scotland is formaldehyde may cause cancer suspected of causing genetic defects toxic if swallowed may cause respiratory irritation causes damage to organs do not breathe One of the fish farm workers told us that the workers um, come down to the farm um, early in the morning, spraying the chemicals into the fish cages. So they're obviously spraying something down there in the water. The guy who gave us the tip off said that toxic chemicals are widely used across Scotland, including formaldehyde and also hydrogen peroxide. And these are supposed to treat the diseases and lice problems which are both rampant across the fish farms. You know, these are not chemicals that you want in your body. Whatever he's spraying must be pretty powerful if he needs to wear full protective chemical suit and a face mask.바다가 70억 인구의 쓰레기통이 되어가고 있고 양식장은 생선을 화학물질로 적시고 있는 지금 생선을 먹는 것이 이토록 유독했던 적이 없습니다. 
You know, our oceans have become humanity's sewers. Everything eventually flows into the sea. So if you had a, you know, time machine that go back before the Industrial Revolution, it's a different story. But now, the highest levels of many of these persistent organic pollutants, we're talking about, you know, DDT and PCBs and uh, dioxins, the highest levels in our food supply are found in the aquatic food chain. Fish are not the safest choice anymore. So, Tony, it's great to see you. Great to see you as well. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Not at all. Thank you. A pleasure being here. So I wanted to ask you if you could share with us what, is, what exactly it was you began to feel when you realized something was going wrong. I was exhausted more than usual, and then I was losing short-term memory, and that scared the hell out of me. And then I tore my rotator cuffs in a really intense snowboarding accident, and the doctor said, do you want to do your metals test? And I said, ah, I got my amalgams out 25 years ago. He goes, there's so many metals in the environment, you should do it. So I did, I get a phone call a week later, and I said to my assistant, just have him send the report, and he said, no, it's an emergency, he has to speak to you. I was like, no one wants to hear that. And so I called him up and he said, Tony, I showed your blood tests. You have extreme mercury poisoning. On a zero to five scale, which is what we measure, five being toxic, you're 123. The doctor said, how long has this man been in the hospital? And I just got off stage. So I, I, I said, I can't understand this. So I, I went out and they thought, you know, maybe someone was trying to poison me because the number was so high. And I was very disciplined. I was a vegan for 12 years, and then I just went salad fish, salad fish. And they brought the medical group out here, and they looked at it, and I found this man named Dr. Shade, who's the only guy who has an ideation process where you can see where the mercury came from, and it was fish. Mm -hmm. It's been three years, um, and I had some severe moments. It burned a hole in my esophagus, and I literally collapsed. I lost a third of my blood supply. I could have died. I lost half my hemoglobin. People begin to lose their hair, yes. their memory. They lose their memories, as you were doing, as you, yes. no, as you yes. noticed. But they can also have headaches. They can complain of fatigue. Um, they can also have depression. What we're seeing now is with the toxic environmental exposure, and especially with the mercury, methyl mercury in fish, is that everyone has got to be careful because yes. the levels are going up. Udo, tell me, because your specialty is in this, how do you get the fish oils that we all need for the brain and for the body uh, if we can't have fish? What, yeah. what do you suggest? Well, we used to get them from fish oils. Yes. And, but we can actually get them from vegetables. Flax is the richest source of omega-3 that we everybody thinks should come from fish oil. If you get enough of that as starting material, your body will make what the fish oils make and it'll be clean. Many people take fish oils or have fish for the long chain omega-3 fatty acids. And you have to ask yourself the question, well, where do the fish get them from? And it turns out they get them from the algae in the ocean. They get them from plant food. So if you want the purest form of the long chain ready-made omega-3 fatty acids, the best way of doing that is simply to take an algae supplement because then you've got the purest form of it and you don't have the extra risks of having the toxins and the heavy metals and the saturated fat and the cholesterol that you would get from eating a fish. California San Diego 주립대 스크립스 해양 연구진이 참여한 학술진은 세계에서 가장 큰 어류 오염 물질 연구에 착수했습니다. 과학자들은 전 세계 바다의 생선 속에서 독성 물질을 발견했습니다. Nobody would go to the nearest body of water and put in like a cup and drink the water. Um, you're, you're basically getting the concentrated toxins if we're eating fish. 우리의 바다는 플라스틱으로 가득 차 버렸습니다. 바다는 너무나도 넓기에 그 어느 과학자도 이 플라스틱이 도무지 어디서 왔는지 정확히 이해하는 건 어려운 일입니다. 대략 160만 제곱 킬로미터를 차지하는 태평양 거대 쓰레기 지대는 점점 늘어가는 바다의 미세 플라스틱 문제를 이해하는 데 도움이 됩니다. 오션 클린업의 과학자 팀이 오랜 기간 거대 쓰레기 지대를 관찰하다가 플라스틱의 대부분이 오래된 빨대나 플라스틱 물병이 아닌 수천 톤의 버려진 낚시 도구들이 수조개의 미세 플라스틱 조각으로 부서진 것이라는 사실을 발견했을 때 놀라지 않을 수 없었습니다. 최근 네이처에서 발표한 연구에 따르면 태평양에서 발견되는 플라스틱의 80%는 버려진 낚시 도구입니다. 많은 과학자들은 개인이 바다의 플라스틱 문제 해결에 가장 크게 기여하는 방법은 생선을 멀리하고 채식을 선택하는 거라고 합니다. At least half of the plastic in the sea today comes from discarded or lost fishing gear. Because all those nets, all those lines, all that stuff, it's, it's just become a plasticized ocean. But we have a chance 
We have a chance right now to change our eating habits. There's an estimate that there's over five trillion tons of plastic currently floating in the ocean. It's absolutely everywhere. Everywhere we look, we found microplastics, whether it's at the polar regions, in remote islands. Also, if we're looking on the surface or the seabed, and everywhere in between, we find microplastics. We've also found microplastics in just about every animal group that we've looked in. We've been sampling for microplastics for quite a while now, and we found that there's 27 times more bits of plastic than there are fish larvae. 미세 플랑크톤은 바다 전역에서 발견됩니다. 그들은 여가 섭식 동물입니다. 연구자들이 플랑크톤의 환경에 미세 플라스틱을 주입했을 때 플랑크톤이 미세 플라스틱의 독성을 알지 못한 채 흡입하는 것을 지속적으로 관찰했습니다. 연구원들은 이러한 작은 해양 생물의 체내에 화학 물질이 어떻게 축적되는지 관찰했습니다. 이 유독성 플랑크톤은 큰 물고기에 잡아먹힙니다. 그리고 연구원들은 대부분 생선들의 체내에 이러한 화학 물질이 축적되어 있음을 발견했습니다. Plymouth 대학의 연구에 따르면 실험을 진행한 생선 중 3분의 1에서 미세 플라스틱이 검출됐습니다. 우리가 오염된 생선을 계속 섭취한다면 이 같은 독성 화학 물질을 우리 몸속으로 흡수하게 됩니다. 그리고 최근 연구에서 비슷한 독성 물질 축적 현상을 발견했습니다. 我们现在看到我们现在的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命的生命
and the most important driver of that is our use of land for agriculture. Over time, um, livestock have been a major, major driver of biodiversity loss. Some have predicted that by 2045, the species loss will be so great that we won't recover. The earth will suffer ecological collapse. And the biggest thing you and I can do is change our diet. 일부 과학자들은 이 위기를 생물학적 소멸이라고 부릅니다. 플로리다 국제대학교의 학술지 종합환경과학회지에 따르면 축산업이 생물 다양성 손실의 주요 원인입니다. 사이언스 학술지 연구에 따르면 만약 전 세계가 식물성 식습관으로 전환한다면 우리는 지구 농경지의 75% 이상을 되찾을 수 있습니다. 그리고 그동안 목축을 위해 잘려나간 많은 나무들도 복원이 가능합니다. 이를 위해 전 세계적으로 많은 조치를 취하고 있습니다. 구글과 비슷한 검색 엔진 에코시아가 바로 그중 하나로 광고로 얻은 수익을 지역 공동체에 지원하여 다시 나무를 심도록 하고 있습니다. 에코시아의 수목 관리인 마우리시오는 브라질 우림의 회복을 위해 많은 노력을 하고 있습니다. Plantei minha primeira árvore eu tinha 5 anos de idade. Eu nem imaginava que 20 anos depois é esse esforço tão pequeno teria virado uma das iniciativas que mais plantou árvores na história do Brasil. Foram mais de 2 milhões e meio de árvores, 2000 hectares plantados, muitas áreas preservadas. pela ação de combate a incêndios florestais. Namunen, is a sang, sing mangal put on a sunida. Uriga Namurushim Nangosin, Uri Bidesiasel, Chigue put in Nangosijo. 우리가 먹는 것이 환경에 주는 영향에 대한 최근 심층 연구가 한 국제 연구팀에 의해 학술지에 실렸습니다. 영국 옥스퍼드 대학의 스프링맨 박사가 이끈 이 획기적인 연구는 파리 기후 협정이 정한 섭씨 2도 한계점 이하로 온도를 유지하려면 고소득 국가들이 육류 소비량을 80% 가량 과감하게 줄여야만 한다는 것을 발견했습니다. Policy makers have been very, very reluctant to address the livestock issue. It's entirely out of keeping with the urgency of the crisis that we're facing. Hi, Otto Brockway for Brockstar Films. Um, this is a question for Commissioner Hogan. The scientists at Oxford University have been very clear that livestock farming has a far greater impact than plant-based farming. With this in mind, would it not be common sense to reduce the billions in subsidy payments to livestock farming in Europe and offer them to plant-based farming instead as an incentive to a much more sustainable food system? We have made our proposals based on protecting the farmers uh, because they are, unlike you and I, they're out in all sorts of weathers and in all sorts of market risks. And you and I may not know anything about that because this is their lives. This is they're producing high quality food for us all so that we can have this particular good quality products available to us at all times. Sometimes under local conditions like organic, more times it's conventional farming. So we provide financial support at the moment for that. And it's a public good that's not always recognized. But the movement of our policy is in the direction of our farmers being centrally involved in providing more public goods. And if you want to do anything in life, you have to pay people. Sometimes I understand that there's a moral obligation and there's people of principle. But most of the time, 99% of the time, they have to get paid. So as professionals that we're expecting to provide good quality food and do more on public goods, we pay our farmers. This is the decision that we make at political level. Livestock emit methane and nitrous oxide. Now, most people, when they think of climate change, they think of CO2, carbon dioxide, which is a very potent global warming gas. But methane is 25 times more potent per molecule when it's released than CO2. And nitrous oxide is 298 times more potent per molecule than CO2. These are very powerful global warming gases. 
So today we have a very special camera um, called a hyperspectral imaging camera. And it basically enables us to be able to see gases that would be otherwise invisible to the naked eye. And today we're looking at methane gas. Methane is a gas that is being produced by cows when they belch. 1750년 이후 메탄과 메탄이 대기에 배출하는 다른 가스들은 지구 온난화의 3분의 1을 차지합니다. 메탄의 주범인 가축은 우리가 통제할 수 있습니다. 메탄 배출량을 급격히 감소시키면 지구 온난화를 15에서 25년 정도 늦출 수 있으며 이는 앞으로의 중대한 시기에 온난화를 늦추는 가장 효과적인 방법입니다. Wow, look at that. Wow. 온실가스의 각기 다른 가열 잠재력을 설명하기 위해 적외선 흡수 실험을 했습니다. 지구 모양의 얼음 조각상 네 개가 각각 밀실 안에 있습니다. 이 밀실은 지구를 감싸고 있는 대기 역할을 합니다. 그 위에는 이상적인 온도의 적외선 히터가 있습니다. 그리고 각자 다른 가스로 채워져 있습니다. 첫 번째는 우리가 매일 마시는 평범한 공기로 채워져 있습니다. 두 번째는 온난화를 유발하는 이산화탄소로 채워져 있습니다. 세 번째는 축산업과 연관된 메탄으로 채워져 있습니다. 네 번째 역시 축산업과 연관된 아산화질소로 채워져 있습니다. 이산화탄소 밀실에 있는 얼음 조각상이 서서히 녹기 시작합니다. 일반 공기 밀실보다 비교적 먼저 녹기 시작했습니다. 하지만 동일한 짧은 시간 안에 메탄 밀실과 아산화질소 밀실의 조각상들은 더욱 빠르게 녹고 있습니다. 일반 공기와 이산화탄소에 비해 내부 온도가 훨씬 높게 오르기 때문입니다. 16시간 후의 결과는 더욱 분명합니다. 축산업의 부산물인 메탄과 아산화질소가 바로 강력한 기후 온난화 가스라는 것을 명백히 알수 있습니다. 인간의 소비를 위해 길들여지는 약 700억 마리의 육상 동물 중 90% 가량이 닭입니다. 최근에 불거진 문제는 바로 닭 소비가 증가하고 있다는 겁니다. 붉은 고기에 비해 닭의 환경적 영향은 적지만 전 세계 닭중 90%가 집약적으로 길러지고 있으며 지구에 엄청난 피해를 주고 있습니다. 고기, 병아리콩과 함께 단백질 칼로리를 비교해보면 닭고기는 일반적으로 소비되는 붉은 고기보다 환경에 덜 해롭습니다. 그러나 여전히 칼로리당 기후 온난화 유발 위험이 식물성 단백질인 병아리콩보다 40배가 높으며 소모하는 물의 양은 50배에 달합니다. We know that if we would shift from uh, ruminant meats to other meats, then we probably would reduce uh, our footprint just from, from that particular product by about a factor of 10, which is quite a bit. Uh, but if you compare that with how much you would reduce uh, your footprint if you went to plant-based products, that is a, about a factor of 100. Uh, and that's the reason why shifting to more, towards more plant-based diets has such a big impact, because we're really talking about different scales here. 유기농 고기가 환경과 기후에 더 적은 영향을 준다고 합니다. 그러나 옥스퍼드 대학의 연구에 따르면 유기 축산과 일반 축산의 온실가스 배출량은 큰 차이가 없다고 합니다. So in our data, we didn't find big differences between organic and conventional across multiple indicators. What we did find is that no matter how you produce animal products, even the lowest impact forms of production still create higher emissions and use more land than typical vegetable proteins. So that's saying something really important. That's saying that even if you go into the shops and try and purchase sustainable meat or dairy, it's always going to be better to purchase vegetable proteins instead. 미국 정부는 매년 과일과 채소 농업에 약 2천만 달러를 지원합니다. 
그러나 축산업과 낙농업은 정부로부터 약 380억 달러의 엄청난 지원금을 받습니다. 현재 육류와 유제품 섭취로 인한 질병으로 발생하는 연간 비용이 약 3,140억 달러로 추산됩니다. 50만 이상의 목숨을 앗아간 돼지 인플루엔자는 돼지 사육에서 발생한 것으로 알려져 있습니다. 에이즈와 에볼라 바이러스는 야생동물 섭취로부터, 메르스는 낙타와 낙타우유, 낙타고기로부터 발생했습니다. 사스는 살아있는 동물을 파는 시장에서 시작된 것으로 추정됩니다. 최근에 코로나19도 마찬가지입니다. 조류독감은 당농장과 역시나 살아있는 동물을 파는 시장에서 시작된 것으로 추정됩니다. 그리고 홍역은 소농장에서 발생한 것으로 추정됩니다. People know now what a global pandemic feels like. Um, they've seen the effects. They will be feeling the effects for many years to come. And this is a chance, I think, an opportunity to point out that this particular route of infection is, is a, a, a very concerning one. 세계보건기구는 머지않아 포스트 항생제 시대가 올 것이라고 발표했습니다. 팔에 난 작은 상처 하나가 치명적일 수 있는 시대가 오는 겁니다. 우리의 기적적인 항생제들이 아무런 쓸모가 없어지는 거죠. 인간이 과용해서가 아니라 수억 마리의 가축들에게 매일같이 투여했기 때문입니다. 외딴 섬나라 대만의 북쪽 지방에는 고산지대에 사는 아타알족이 있습니다. 
대만은 이상기후에 익숙합니다. 하지만 최근 몇 년간 태풍의 강도와 빈도수가 증가했습니다. 이는 아타얄족과 그들의 생활에 엄청난 피해를 입혔습니다. 요로라키구치포가네토키가야바우투카이는냐낙샤가조로블라이는냐네이니프주금냐나위 전 세계의 많은 곳에서 날로 심각해지는 홍수를 겪고 있는 동안 또 다른 많은 곳에선 그 정반대의 경험을 하고 있습니다. 세계 곳곳에서 극심한 가뭄으로 농부들이 밭에 물을 줄수 없어 수천 톤의 농작물이 죽어가고 있습니다. I'm definitely worried about the future of our farm. I think um, we're seeing, you know, much more, uh, many more swings in climate than we've seen in the past. But we want to use uh, all the land that we have to grow food. Um, but we haven't been able to just because of the uh, the shortages of water. It'll have an impact on food supply and prices and uh, availability. And so estimates now are between 500,000 to over a million acres of farmland that'll come out of production in California. 스페인 남부 도시 알메리아에는 9,378만 평의 실내 농장이 있습니다. 알메리아에서 유럽의 과일과 야채의 절반이 생산되며 식품 시스템 공급의 핵심 역할을 담당하고 있죠. 안타깝게도 스페인은 20년간 가뭄을 겪고 있습니다. 전문가들은 이 가뭄이 기후 변화와 밀접히 연관되어 있다고 합니다. In terms of water, the truth is that the drought in Spain has become a complete catastrophe. Our harvests are decreasing in massive quantities. Last year, in the area we are now, there was almost no harvest. People don't realize the food system is collapsing. The global system's change has caused the drought in Africa to become even more 수백만 명에게 신선한 물을 공급하는 강과 호수들이 마르기 시작했습니다. 자원 감소로 인해 새로운 갈등이 생겨나면서 많은 사람들이 살아남기 위해 북쪽으로 대탈출을 감행합니다. 이러한 기후변화 난민은 모든 위험을 감수하더라도 유럽의 안전지대로 가족과 함께 이동하려고 합니다. 이러한 집단 이주에 대응하기 위해 스페인은 도시 멜리아의 남쪽 경계를 따라 거대한 벽을 세웠습니다. 수천 명의 난민들은 이 벽을 오르기 시작했으며 스페인 경찰들은 속수무책입니다. 이러한 이민 패턴이 증가할 것이라는 예측 가운데 우리가 제대로 대처하지 못하고 있다는 것이 갈수록 분명해지고 있습니다. 자기 앞에 생명을 먹어치우듯 
몽골의 고비 사막이 내륙으로 점점 깊게 퍼져나가면서 사람과 야생동물 모두에게 필요한 많은 호수들이 현재 말라붙었습니다. 만약 호수가 계속 사라진다면 사람들은 강제로 집에서 떠밀려 멀고 낯선 곳으로 쫓겨나게 됩니다. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
So I feel like if I went pie based, I'd miss it. But if this like stuff tastes the same, yeah, I'd be very happy with this. It yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> That's all good burger. Go. Thank you. It would interest you to know that that's completely pot based. And I would have known. So that I would definitely. Wow. That's a winner. Yeah, I'm amazed. If burgers always tasted like that, would you be happy to just not eat a beef burger? Yeah, again? no, I got a veggie. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like you to tell me which one of these nuggets is plant based and which one is real meat. Hard to say which one is. <laughs> they taste exactly the same, honestly. These are not the chicken. No. That's interesting. Which one of this is animal meat, and which one of this is plant-based? Meat or not meat? You're not sure. No. You're not sure. Yeah, you're not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Meat. You? Yes. Are uh, wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. But you think the second one was chicken? Yeah. The second one was actually plant-based. No way. Yeah, and the first one no was way. chicken. Yeah. Okay, I didn't... No, I, <laughs> I couldn't have guessed that. I definitely thought the first one... Yeah, definitely. It seems that changing what we eat to a more sustainable diet can also coincidentally be very beneficial to our health. There is a growing understanding that we can actually prevent and in many cases even reverse some of our most common diseases all through a shift towards a whole food vegan diet. Humans can survive on many different kinds of diet but many decades of research has now shown us that the best way of not just surviving but truly thriving is on a whole food plant-based diet. A human can be healthy on a plant-based diet without any animal products. The major dietetic associations around the world, including the British Dietetic Association, have produced statements to say exactly that, that a diet made up of whole plant foods is healthy for humans all stages of their lives. And not only can they be healthy, but they can restore or reclaim their health adopting a plant-based diet. There are certain areas, certain populations around the world that have extraordinary health and longevity. For example, the largest number of centenarians, people that live over 100, these so-called blue zones. What's really interesting about the blue zones, they actually have more centenarians than anywhere else in the world. And a centenarian is someone that lives at least 100 years. Uh, but, but what's really interesting about the Blue Zones is when people reach these advanced ages, they are still productive. So the Blue Zones have taught us a lot. And the bottom line is we really want to try to emulate what the people of the Blue Zones are doing. The longest time and longest time in the Blue Zones are known as the five states. Japan's Okinawa, Italy's Sardinia, Greece's Icaria, Costa Rica's Nicoya, 그리고 캘리포니아의 로마린다입니다. So the question is, well, what do they all have in common? They have a predominantly plant-based diet. They have a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, soy, lentils, chickpeas. They have a diet rich in all these nutrients, and that's one thing that they have in common. So the EPIC study is the European Perspective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition. It followed over half a million individuals from 10 European countries for more than 15 years. Those in the EPIC study that were eating predominantly plant-based or eating high levels of fruits and vegetables lived longer, had lower incidence of cancer and heart disease. About 2,500 of the individuals in the EPIC Oxford only ate plant food, so they were vegan. Um, and even though they weren't the most healthy vegans or healthy plant eaters, you could show that these plant eaters were healthier, um, they had a lower incidence of heart disease, diabetes and cancer. From everything we have discovered on this journey, it seems that moving away from animal foods to plant-based foods instead can not only give us a whole host of amazing health benefits, but also gives us a chance to be able to leave a sustainable planet for future generations to come. Perhaps the single most meaningful change that we can make as individuals is ultimately deciding what ends up each day on our plates. We are running out of time. The world community must acknowledge that animal agriculture is the most destructive industry on our planet. 
We can't wait for government policies and other organizations to create a better life for ourselves. We need to stand up now and make our voices heard. Globally, for the typical consumer, avoiding meat and dairy is probably the single biggest way to reduce your impact on Earth. Without addressing uh, what we eat, we simply won't make it. This is a number one priority. This is a next step in taking responsibility for our communities, our planet, our biosphere, our fellow species. People say, what can I do as an individual? It feels overwhelming. Well, you can make individual choices. We all can. Our individual choices affect the collective choices. When you hear about airplanes and cars, and we're still going to use those things. But the choices we make in our diet, this agricultural business where we use animals as the primary source of protein, the one thing I think we can all do is, and individuals, is make our own individual choices, how we're going to live, how we're going to eat. Plant-based diet makes all the difference in the world. Just make some choices that are good for you, and being good for you will be good for the planet. 지구는 우리 모두의 집입니다. 이제 어떤 일이 일어날지는 우리에게 달려 있습니다. 우리가 같은 마음으로 함께 힘을 합친다면 위대한 일을 해낼 수 있음을 역사는 보여주었습니다. 모두 함께 번영하는 세계를 만들 수 있는 기회가 우리 앞에 놓여 있습니다. 그러나 시간은 흐르고 있고 시간은 얼마 남지 않았습니다.